É, e para falar sobre o, o social commerce, uma visão geral de mercado, a gente vai convidar a Demi. Now I will switch to English to introduce Demi. Uh, you need to put your uh, device on. Ok. Uh, she currently... Parou aqui. Voltou? She currently leads brand partnership at Doing E-Commerce Global for the America and Europe. Over uh, 600 million active users. Just a reference, the Brazil is 200 million. The whole Latin America is 600 million. That's me. From Mexico to Argentina, every, everybody every day getting in the, uh, in the app. That's 600 million daily users me. Involved in the China cross-border sex sector since 2015, her passions lie in helping foreigner brands and partners uh, who wants to expand their presence and succeed in China. Uh, leveraging her experience, Demi guides brands through an in, uh, entry solution into the Chinese market to ensure a successful launch on the premium social e-commerce platform of online channels. Before ByteDance, Demi's worked for Alibaba uh, and, uh, for, for four years overseeing the fashion and the beauty categories. Demi uh, is, the, is the head of the brand partnership America in Europe, We invite you to the stage. Obrigado, gente. Thank you. Thank you, Leandra. Thank you, Denti. Thank you. Stay Thank you. Okay. Boa tarde, Brazil. That's pretty much all the Portuguese I know. Uh, so um, my name is Demi Xu. I head up a brand partnership for Douyin E-Commerce Global uh, at ByteDance. I am based in Biden's New York City office. Before I start my presentation today, I want to get an idea how many of you guys are actually selling into China right now. Raise your hand. Wow. Apparently, I got some work to do. Um, see, that's why I flew 10 hours to come here, and hopefully there will be more Brazilian businesses and brands selling into China. So, um, before I start, um, I would like to give you a little bit idea of, because I'm going to talk about cross-border business to China. For the guys uh, that are selling into China, you might be aware for any international brands or businesses selling into China, there is a lot of regulations to follow. So, for example, you will need to have an entity in China. You will need to have your products relabeled in Chinese, and you need to pay the import tax and duties, um, which is quite high. So the thing is, even though there's many restrictions for selling for international brand selling into China market, the domestic consumers in China still have high demand for international products. So in 2014, when China government realized The domestic demand uh, for Chinese consumers uh, for international products is very high. And what they do is that they ask friends or families or like even trustworthy resellers in overseas market or somebody like me who live in the United States to buy international products of retail. And then sh bring it to them or ship it directly to them from China. So they don't pay any taxes and all the goods goes into China. Doesn't go through any regulation or supervision. So then China government realized, oh, you know, we got to do something about this. And then the major marketplaces in China proposed this idea of a cross-border e-commerce, basically opened a window for international brands to sell into China, bypassing all these general trade regulations at a much more faster and efficient way. So let's dive into China cross-border e-commerce market. So we know that China has 1.4 billion population. And out of that 1.4 billion people, over 1 billion are internet users. So the e-commerce sales in China has reached 3.2 billion this year, which makes China the largest e-commerce market in the world. And we can see, if you can see the chart, There is a, it's showing a steady growth in terms of the penetration of the total 
uh, e-commerce sales compared to overall retail sales in China, by 2026, it's going to be more than half of the overall, overall retail sales in China. So e-commerce in China market is huge. And when it comes to cross-border import businesses, and we can see the import volume of cross-border e-commerce has achieved nearly tenfold growth in the past five years. So me personally, being in this industry for the uh, past decades, I definitely know many international brands have contributed to the growth. So the good news is the consumers for import products are still growing, and the policies that's issued by the China government is still encouraging importing products. And the infrastructure has been improving to encourage import products selling into China. For example, since 2018, China government started holding this uh, China International Import Expo for the first time. It's happening in Shanghai every November, every year. This is the only trade show that was proposed, implemented, and promoted by the president of China. So we all know China is a large exporting country. In order to find the balance for international trade globally, they highly encourage international products selling to China and to feed the demand in the domestic market. So we're looking for, in the next three years, we are expecting the scale of import cross-border e-commerce to be double. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, growing opportunities for international brands. Basically, there are two ways for any international brands to sell into China and ship into China logistically. Uh, number one is the direct shipping model, and number two is the bonded warehouse model. So what's a direct shipping model? Basically, for any international brand that wants to establish a store, let's say a establish a business at a major marketplace platforms in China, the marketplace will set up fulfillment warehouses in the local country, and you can utilize basically whatever you have in your warehouse in the domestic country. And a, you basically launch all your products virtually on the platform. A consumer in China placed the order, you receive the order in real time, fulfill it, send it to, let's say, assuming Sao Paulo has a warehouse, a 3PL warehouse to fulfill the order. Send to that domestic warehouse, and then that warehouse will take care of the international shipping, custom, deliver, uh, custom clearance, and the last mile delivery for you. So basically, it's a drop shipping model. Uh, this usually works better with fashion products, because considering the seasonality, the sizing issue, uh, people do not want to ship products bulk to China and just let it sit. So the second model is a bonded warehouse model. A uh, bonded warehouse model is basically a physical warehouse that's located in mainland China. It's a bonded warehouse and it's tax-free. The product does not, you do not have to pay any tax duties until the product is sold to the end consumers. So which means the product price will always include the cross-border tax. So you ship an order in bulk to a bonded warehouse in China, launch the products online, consumer place an order, bonded warehouse fulfill it, do custom clearance, and do the last mile delivery. Generally, this process only takes a few days. Shopping experience is much better than the direct shipping. It works with the categories like beauty and personal care, health and wellness, the standard non-sizing products better. So um, some brands may do a combination of both. It really depends on what the strategies are. Uh, both are open. So now we know that there is a demand for cross-border products. Who, who are the consumers? Honestly, the cross-border consumers are people who are like me, my friends, my classmates, and families in China. So as you can see from the data here, uh, Almost 60% of our consumers are female, and their age is from somewhere 25 to 50 years old. Actually, the majority of them are from 25 to 40 years old. So you are looking at a group of a younger generation, well-educated, everybody has a bachelor degree, they speak English, they're very open to international products, and they are seeking for a global lifestyle. 
So they are located uh, at different cities in China. Uh, not only the big tier one cities like Shanghai or Beijing, as you can see here, there are 17% of them are located at tier four and under cities. The reason for that is because for the consumers who has that power to spend and to buy international products, that money, um, they do not have the same access as people who live in a big city for international products. So if you're living in a big city like Sao Paulo, you want to buy a Gucci products, you can go to a luxury store. But if you're in a small city, you don't have access to those. So that's why they go online. They go on the e-commerce e platforms and shop for products from overseas. And almost 70% of our cross-border e-commerce consumers are married with the kids. And their average household income uh, monthly is from somewhere from 12,000 to 30,000 RMP per, per month. I did a conversion. So basically it's like uh, 9,200 Brazilian real to 23,000 Brazilian real. But remember this, guys. Chinese are savers. They save money for themselves. They save money for their kids. I know in the US, some people are still paying their student loan at age 30 plus. But in China, the parents pay it all. They even pay for children's housing. So even these people are 25 years old. They have money to spend to buy any international products that they want. Because they have savings from a generation that's been passed down. So they're very premium customers uh, comparing to the overall consumer profile across all different marketplaces in China. So initially, when consumers in China are looking for products overseas, they're looking for quality, authentic products from overseas, because authenticity is a huge thing in China. But I would say nowadays, it has been evolved People not only that looking for quality products can, you know, represent their quality lifestyle, but also they want to explore different products that can represent their personalities, their characteristics. Their, um, they can be like, oh, I use this niche brand. It's from a very niche country or region to express themselves, to show that they're different. Instead of using mass produce the products, they want something unique and special. And they experience a different global lifestyle. So top categories are like beauty and personal care. And ever since COVID, I believe this has changed people's lifestyle globally, but especially in China. Health and wellness category has become the number one category for cross-border e-commerce business. So any supplements, dietary uh, products, and also sports and, sports and outdoor become really trendy because people want a healthier lifestyle too, which drives a lot of Western sports and uh, outdoor brands uh, into the China market. So now we know cross-border e-commerce is there. Um, I'm not sure if you guys, uh, how familiar you are with the social commerce. So I did some research before I come here. I know uh, there is an influencer called Virginia Fose sorry, Fosenka. I know, she's very popular. She has like 13 million followers on YouTube. She does live selling, uh, selling on YouTube, but it's directed to her own website. And I know in the past, uh, there is a channel called Shop Time in uh, Brazil for TV shopping. So social commerce is basically a TV shopping or any sort of live streaming selling on one app. And you can basically do marketing and selling for your brand on one app in one place. So this is an example. Um, the difference between a social commerce versus a traditional e-commerce. Traditional e-commerce, we all know how the algorithm works, right? It's like putting your products on a shelf at a supermarket and you just scroll down, try to learn about the products by reading the descriptions, scrolling the images. This might be easy for many younger generation, millennials, Gen Zs. But, but for people who are older, like my parents, a very traditional old school Chinese, it's impossible for them to make a purchase decision. Because it's just like they are more comfortable go to a mall and feel the products and see it and feel it. 
So based on my knowledge, my parents have never shopped at any B2C or C2C marketplaces in China before. But in 2022, when I went back to China, my dad gave me this toy to my daughter. I'm like, where did you get this? He's like, I bought it from Douyin. I'm like, you shop on Douyin? So then that's when I realized not only he shops stuff for like my daughter, my nephew, but also he shops for snacks for the household, shops for his clothes. And my mom always commenting how good he looks in the, you know, in the clothes he bought from Douyin. So from the first, from the very first video you can see, the lady is doing a live streaming selling. As you can see, many live streaming, they will have a model if they're selling the products, even clothing, they have a model try it on. So for example, for instance, people like my dad, they will hire this older gentleman as a model, different height, different weight, and tell the audiences what size they're wearing. So like the audiences can know right away what work for them and how the clothes looks like on them. And they can even leave a message, so you can see live there, and ask questions, and the live streamer always answer the questions during the live streaming. There's a shopping cart on the bottom, you can just do one click, and you can buy the products right there. You don't have to make a phone call like TV shopping. Um, the second guy, it's, the second video is a guy who is actually demonstrating how to using a face wash product and explaining the brand, the benefit of the products. Uh, it's a short formed video. As you can see, the video on the bottom has a yellow shopping cart as well. So after listening to him explaining about the products and the brand, you can just do one click and you can buy the products. On the social media app, we also have a traditional shopping mall, which is the third uh, screenshot that you can see. Like you can also uh, scroll down and learn more about the products. But the difference is, is, the difference is when you click into that product link, it actually most of the time will include a video to showcase the products or like a video clip from like a live streaming to talk about the products. So in conclusion, the social commerce really makes the shopping experience like so much more convenient for consumers. Because you don't have to read, you can ask live questions when they're doing live streaming. And for some people who are like my old school parents, it's easier for them to make a purchase decision and during my years working in the cross-border e-commerce market to China, I definitely know many international brands have struggled when they first enter China market. Uh, the reason is we all know how B2C algorithm works, right? I go shopping on Amazon. I don't even go on the second page because the first page will push you the best sellers with the best reviews. I never shop at the second page which means it's very difficult for new brand to be seen and the traffic become very expensive because the way the algorithm works is just not so friendly for new brand, especially during the incubation period. But the difference for social commerce is it's all about the content. You can be a new brand, but if you content of either it's a live streaming or short form video, you can produce some content that explain, uh, explain your brand DNA, explain your products. It will constantly, indefinitely, uh, infinitely match to the consumers who are tagged with the same interest. So in other words, the algorithm are always working constantly between the content and the consumers. Traditionally, when you launch a new brand, you know, you have to do marketing at a different social market, uh, social media platform. In the US, Instagram or Facebook. In China, Little Red Book. But with the Douyin, with the social commerce, marketing and selling happens at the same time. So this is an omni-channel powerhouse where you can really build your brand from zero to one and scale it from one to 10 because we have massive users. So like I've mentioned, there are multiple ways to build your brand uh, on a social uh, commerce platform. You can, at the beginning of the stage when you launch a brand, you work with an influencer. 
whether it's through live streaming or short form video. You work with the influencer who, whose followers are your target audiences. So you, they endorse your products, talk about your products, build up the initial awareness. Once you have some awareness, you can build up your own official account and using that IP, that account to do self live streaming consistently. You will get more engaged with your fans, your followers, and the loyalty of your consumers and activate them to buy more products from you. And of course, on the app, you can also uh, buy like searching for the products when consumers are search searching. As a platform, we also do year-round promotions to build up the awareness for international brands overall. Um, so we can have more consumers who are interested in international products coming to the platform. So what's uh, Douyin e-commerce? Uh, have you any, have any one of you heard of Douyin before today? Perfect. Thank you. I'm sure the logo looks very familiar. Um, so Douyin is a leading short video app in China. We have 1 billion users, only towards uh, Chinese-speaking audiences in China. So the company was, the, the app was launched in 2016. And today, we have 600 million daily active users on the app that spends, on average, one to two hours on the platform, which includes my parents. <laughs> so as you can see, we have a lot of uh, search activities on the platform. Uh, that's why when we notice consumers are searching for products on the platform, we launched the Douyin e-commerce. Douyin e-commerce was launched in 2020, so a fairly new app, but we're the fast uh, growing social commerce platform or e-commerce platform, however you call it, in the country. So with the launch of Douyin e-commerce, we have popularized live streaming and short form videos. In results, we also have incubated many content creators, influencers uh, in China market that can help brand to build their brand awareness and do product selling. So basically, Douyin e-commerce global, which is a part of Douyin e-commerce, is basically focusing on the cross-border part of the business. Like I said, in order for an international brand to build up the brand awareness, uh, you can work with the KOL live streaming, short video endorsement, and you can also do uh, your own official account live streaming. And the platform always run marketing event, group the brands together to bring more awareness uh, for, the, for the brand. So even though we're only doing e-commerce global is only three years old, uh, we're already one of the leading cross-border platform in China. In 2023, we have sold 3,800 brands from 78 regions and countries in the world, and we deliver that to uh, 48 million Chinese consumers. As of right now, the main business model for uh, an international brand to sell on Douyin e-commerce global is launching a brand flagship store. So I have explained the benefit of how cross-border started. Basically, if you using, uh, if you launch on Douyin e-commerce global, you can use your overseas entity to establish your store. You can maintain your original package, you can get paid in your local currents, currency, and you can utilize a bounded warehouse or do direct shipping from internationally to sell into Chinese uh, consumers. And what the platform does is that most of the time, we're the one who provide the infrastructure, the education, the resources that the brand need for them to launch on our platform, which includes if you don't have a business partner in China, because you need someone who handles the daily, day of, daily operation in China, we can match you with the certified Douyin partners to who can help you with the daily execution uh, to handle your brand store on Douyin e-commerce global. And then we also have a category team in China that work closely with your partners, share category insights, data, what it takes you know, in the incubation period for a brand. And then we also work with all influencers, whether it's the domestic influencers in China or Chinese speaking influencers abroad to promote brand. And we connect influencers with the products, with the brands 
to promote the brand and the sales. Because influencers need products, and the brand needs influencers to, to build up the brand awareness. So basically, in order for you to grow your brand, there is a multi-party involved. Uh, you know, the platform, the brand, the influencer, and the doe-in partner. Like I said, usually the platform provides the resources, the information, and the brand is the one who makes the decision for market entry, and doe-in partners handles the daily execution, have a landing plan for your brand, how to build up your brand in the market, and then the influencers are the one who work with the partner, with your doe-in partners, working with the brand and the platform closely to generate sales and build up the brand awareness. So I will give you a few examples or showcases that for brand has launched on our platform. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have any Brazilian brands to showcase today, but we have a few brands from the US from each category. Ali is a health and wellness brand uh, in the United States. They sell those gummies that can help you to sleep, and, and, and they also have top sellers as a multivitamin gummies. In 2023, they have generated over 300 million RMB in sales. That's 42 million US dollars. And what they have done is they partner with the top influencers in China that has followers that resonates with the products, build up the brand awareness, and every month they tag like 3,000 short form videos uh, for their products to be you know, talked about by many different content creators. They also do their brand official account live selling. Uh, another skincare brand from California is Demologica. They are actually the number one facial mask brand on our platform. This brand, when they enter China through cross-border e-commerce model, they use Douyin as their main battlefield. They build up the brand awareness, they incubate the brand, which helps their overall channels, uh, sales channels um, in other marketplaces in China as well. So they, what they have done to balance their margin is to do a lot of self live streaming with their own uh, official account. As you can see from the girl, uh, from the third screenshot, the girl could be just some random uh, employee that, from the brand and they just talk about the products and sell it on their own. Another brand is Fenty Beauty by Rihanna. Uh, when Fenty Beauty launched in China, uh, they uh, launched in Do on Douyin e-commerce global. They actually leveraged our resources from our platform and launched our campaign with many different influencers. They were using Fenty Beauty's products, working with Rihanna's makeup artists and build up this like show look, like a celebrity look and then at the same time to build up the brand awareness. So with that, um, they have generated over 50,000 orders during that campaign, and which made them the number one beauty brands on the platform for that day. Uh, last but not le least, uh, the fashion brand, uh, actually is a fashion retailer called Paxson from California. In 2023, they have uh, increased their followers by over 200,000. And the hashtag topic pack song uh, has exposed, uh, increased more than 56 million. So 80% of their sales are generated through live streaming. Whether it's live streaming from China or live stream from their Los Angeles stores. Um, they worked with the 40 celebrities in China and of course different influencers as well for live streaming. Uh, they're not our number one uh, fashion brand, but they have sold a lot of uh, sweatshirts on our platform. So this is a pretty much it of my presentation today. If you are interested in China market and want to get in touch with our team, please scan the QR code uh, so you can connect with us. Um, if you can have only Three takeaways today from my presentation. I hope that you do remember China e-commerce is a huge market and there's demand for international products. Number two, cross-border e-commerce or cross-border social commerce make it easier for international brand to sell into China uh, without having all that requirement. 
Number three, me and our team are always here to provide you the guidance and the resources that you need for you to land on our platform and to really succeed in China market. Thank you so much and obrigada.